Yes! Wow! What the prof is cooking! Greetings, class, and welcome to Horror 101. Once again, like always, I am your humble, kind of teacher, Professor Macabro. Now, you're probably asking yourselves, Professor, what in God's name are you doing? How can you possibly think of mixing horror with wrestling? And to you, I would say, Blah! Shut up! It's my show. I can do whatever the hell I want. But, specifically, this plays into today's tale of terror. Yes, you would normally not think that wrestling and horror would mix. Although, we have had wrestlers intertwined into the horror genre. Most notably, Kane was in the See No Evil films, two of them actually. So, the crossover is not improbable. But, a horror movie specifically centered around wrestling, well, you don't see that quite often. If you live in the US, if you live in Mexico, you do, because here we have the masked luchadors. And way back in the 60s, 70s, we had an entire genre dedicated to the masked luchadors. Sometimes they would be James Bond ripoffs, and sometimes they would be horror. But that was in the 60s, 70s, you would say. No one has ever recorded a horror movie or even a luchador movie since. Well, I have a surprise for you, class. For I have just that tale right here. And it's called Wrestle Maniac. Yes, a movie, a recent movie that stars a masked luchador. But I like the luchador films previously mentioned, this guy is a psychopathic killer. My kind of guy. Yes, the plot of this movie, at first, is, let's be honest, kind of ridiculous. A group of American people are traveling to Mexico to, of all things, film a porno. Yes, they decide we need to film a porno. We have a very low budget. Let's go all the way to Mexico, and let's find a raggedy, <coughs> sorry, a raggedy, beat up town, completely abandoned, in the heat of Mexico, and let's film a porno there, because I guess there's a market for that kind of thing. So these people set up shop and start going about their business of filming their raggedy porno. But unknown to them, in this abandoned town, there is a masked man, a masked man looking for a challenge. A little, bit of, a little bit of backstory class. In Mexico, the masked luchadors, and indeed anyone that has a mask, is the mask itself is a code of honor. If you have a mask, it brings certain power to your character. Hence, why I wear a mask and have this delightful image. But, to a luchador, a mask is everything, and without the mask, the luchador loses his power and his intrigue. Because power lies in mystery. So, this masked luchador is a champion, or was a champion in his right. He would win his matches and take the mask of his opponent, which is also a popular thing in the masked luchador. They would have a mascara contra mascara match, and the loser would have to unmask, and the winner would keep the mask. A famous luchador would have his whole house filled with masks until eventually he was defeated. So this masked luchador is continuously looking for a fight, so when he finds people that he can wrestle with, imagine his tickled surprise. But unfortunately, these people uh, dumbasses, really, that stumble upon his town, though nothing about wrestling. They have no wrestling skills whatsoever, so they are promptly butchered by this luchador. Oh, the curious fact here, he is played by one Rey Mysterio. Not the 619 Rey Mysterio, but the Mexican Rey Mysterio. So, he goes around laying the smacketh down on these idiots. And, since none of them 
actually have masks. Well, we have a Mascara Contra Masker match. You don't have a mask. Whatever shall I take? Why not? I will rip off your face and take your face off. And that's what he does. When he butchers someone, he rips out their face. By the end of the movie, the character that you would think would be the survivor says that he has to put a stop to this luchador's madness. So he dons a mask that he finds and challenges him to a match. <coughs> Which goes as best as you can expect. The luchador beats the hell out of him and takes his, his face off. Ending the movie with the bad guy winning. Ah, my kind of movie. Now, WrestleManiac, unfortunately, does not have the best budget. It's one of those not quite indie movies, but not quite full-fledged production movies. The budget is kind of slow. Oddly enough, kind of like the porno that they were recording. Uh, the gore is pretty good. It's not the best. It's not innovating. It has a decent amount of gore. But if you're a wrestling fan, whether it be the WWE or the Mask Luchadors, this would be a nice thing for you, but not curiosity for the wrestling and horror fan. Now, you're probably asking yourself, as rightly you should, what is the amount of titties that you would see in this? And, well, that's where the movie kind of also falls flat. It's, um movie about a group of people going to Mexico to film a porno and they only have one scene with, you know, any sort of cleavage, which, I don't know, you, why, why, anyway, that point of fact, it is a fun movie, like I said, that will be enjoyed by anyone that likes wrestling and horror. The score for WrestleManiac is a C plus. Enjoyable if, like I said, you're a wrestling fan or a horror fan, but as a film itself, it unfortunately does suffer from low budget, <coughs> very low gore, and very low things that you would expect from people filming a porno. I hope you get a chance to watch this movie and enjoy it. Cause that's the bottom line! Cause the professor said so!